Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is African trypanosomiasis, which is also commonly known as African sleeping sickness. So let's get started. So what is African trypanosomiasis? The African sleeping sickness is a systemic disease which is caused by the parasite called Trypanosoma brucei, which is transmitted by the bite of the tsetse fly, which is a grey-brown insect about the size of a honeybee. The tsetse flies are found just in sub-Saharan Africa, though only certain species of them transmit the disease. So from this definition of African trypanosomiasis, we get that it's also called the African sleeping sickness, and it causes a systemic disease in humans, and it is caused by this parasite called Trypanosoma brucei, which is transmitted by a specific fly called the tsetse fly. So this is actually what the tsetse fly looks like, and it's grayish brown in color and is around the size of a honeybee. And these flies are actually indigenous to sub-Saharan Africa, but only certain species of them are known to transmit this disease. So these flies actually carry a parasite called Trypanosoma brucei, which is pictured here. These are actually what these little parasites look like. And when an individual comes into contact with this fly or is bitten by this fly, the parasite is actually transmitted from the fly into the human. And this is the way in which humans become infected. So now that we know what the basis of African trypanosomiasis is, let's take a closer look at the two forms of the disease. So there are actually two main forms of the Trypanosoma brucei species. And the two main types which are known for causing human disease are called Trypanosoma brucei gambiensi and Trypanosoma brucei rodiensi. So Trypanosoma brucei gambiensi is the parasite which is found in 24 countries in West and Central Africa and currently accounts for 98% of all reported cases of African sleeping sickness. So Gambiensi is actually the more prominent or prevalent type and is actually found in most parts of West and Central Africa, as we can see in these red little dots here. So this type usually goes on to cause a chronic infection in the affected individuals. We then have Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiensi, and this parasite is only found in 13 countries, more in Eastern and Southern Africa, and that's represented in all these blue dots here. So nowadays, this form represents under 2% of all reported cases and usually causes an acute infection. So the more severe one, which accounts for 98% of cases, actually goes on to cause a chronic infection in most individuals. And the one that only accounts for 2%, which is rhodesiancy, usually goes on to cause a short and acute infection in its individuals. So now that we know the forms of this disease, let's take a closer look at how one can contract African trypanosomiasis. So the Trypanosoma brucei gambiensi and Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiensi are usually transmitted to people when an infected tsetse fly bites them and injects the protozoa into their skin. So the protozoa are these parasites, right? So the protozoa move into their lymphatic system and bloodstream where they can multiply. They then travel to organs and tissues throughout the infected patient's body and eventually reach the brain. The infection can then be spread when a fly bites an infected person or animal then bites another person. So I just want to pause there and take a look at this diagram on the left side of my screen which shows the basic transmission of this disease. So firstly we have the tsetse fly which takes a blood meal and injects the trypanosoma brucei parasites into the patient's bloodstream. So we have this fly coming to bite this person. We then have the parasites multiplying by binary fission in the blood, lymph, and the spinal fluid of the patient. So it actually infiltrates the entire bloodstreams, lymphatic system, and also the cerebrospinal fluids of these patients. And from there, we have another tsetse fly, which comes by, bites this individual, and actually ingests the trypanosoma brucei parasite, so this fly, which was uninfected before contact with this human, now becomes infected with the parasite. And in the midgut of this fly, the Trypanosoma brucei multiply by binary fission. The parasites then transform into the infectious state, and then they enter the salivary gland of the fly, and then the fly is able to infect another human. So in this way, the flies become infected, and then the humans become infected. 
and so the cycle continues. So this is the main way in which one can contract the disease. So one may also contract this disease by various other ways. One of them includes when an infected mother who can transmit the protozoa to her baby during pregnancy or delivery. So this means that the disease can actually be transmitted congenitally. And rarely people may also contract the disease through a blood transfusion when they receive a blood transfusion from a person who was infected. And theoretically, the infection can also be transmitted through organ transplant from the infected organ of a donor. So these are the various ways in which one can contract this disease. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of African trypanosomiasis. So different parts of the body are affected in the following order. First, the skin. So a large sore, which is called a chancre, will develop at the site of the tete fly bite. So this is actually what a chancre looks like. This is actually from a patient who was infected with the T. brucei parasite through a tete fly bite. So this is what the chancre looks like. We then have the signs and symptoms which are related to the blood and lymph nodes. So the infection spreads to the blood and the lymph over a period of weeks or months. And then people suffer from fevers that come and go, chills, headaches, muscle and joint pains, and their face may swell temporarily. And in some people, a rash develops and the lymph nodes along their back and neck enlarge. And in some cases, anemia may also develop. We then have the signs and symptoms which are related to the brain and cerebrospinal fluid involvement. And the CSF or cerebrospinal fluid is a fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. So when the brain and CSF fluid are affected, headaches become persistent. So people become drowsy, lose their concentration, and have problems with balance and walking. And this is why this disease is given the name African sleeping sickness, because of the manifestation of these symptoms. So the drowsiness will worsen and people may fall asleep in the middle of activities. And without treatment, damage to the brain may progress, leading to a coma and even death. And death occurs within months or within two to three years after the symptoms develop, depending on the species causing it. And death sometimes results from undernutrition or other infections, so a super infection on this infection. So now that we know what the signs and symptoms of the disease are, let's take a closer look at how one can go about diagnosing this disease. So the diagnosis of African trypanosomiasis is made by identifying the trypanosomes in the fluid from a chancre, lymph node aspirate, blood sample, bone marrow aspirate, or during the late stage of the infection in the CSF. So this is actually the microscopic aspect of what these trypanosoma brucei parasites look like. So samples may be taken from various sources. We can collect samples directly from the chancre. We can do a lymph node aspirate, a blood aspirate, a bone marrow aspirate, and in the late stages, we can also take some CSF fluid and explore them microscopically so that we can look for the T. brucei parasites. The disease can also be diagnosed by antibody detection assays. A lumbar puncture should also be done in patients with African trypanosomiasis. And when the CSF is involved, and this is usually in the chronic cases as we suggested, the opening pressure may be increased. The CSF will have elevated levels of lymphocytes, which are actually more than six cells per millicubic liter. The total proteins and the non-specific IgMs will also be increased. And the blood sample will also show anemia, monocytosis, and a markedly elevated serum level of polyclonal IgMs. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of African trypanosomiasis. So the treatment of African trypanosomiasis varies depending on the stage of the disease. So in patients without central nervous system involvement, the drug of choice administered is pentamidine for 10 to 14 days. And in patients with central nervous system involvement, the drug of choice administered is florinathine for 10 to 14 days as well. And these are both antiparasitic agents, which are very helpful in killing off the parasite. And that brings us to the end of this video on African trypanosomiasis or African sleeping sickness. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.